Hey guys, uh, I've been asked a few times about the camera that I'm using to record onboard DVR um, on this little microcopter. So I figured I'd make a video and uh, just share with you guys everything that I've learned along the way. Uh, this is the Turbo Wing Cyclops that I'm using up here. Uh, I do not use the Cyclops for my FPV feed. Uh, I use the Runcam Micro Swift down there. Uh, which I really like the CCD image and just the quality of that camera. It's kind of my go-to for all of my micro builds. But this guy up here has been a work in progress. This is the TurboWing Cyclops 3 version 2 that I'm running right now. Um, so first thing you got to know about the Cyclops, uh, if you just go and buy this camera, you're going to have some work to do in order to get it uh, to function properly on your quad. Uh, there's a few things. Uh, the first thing is the lens on the version 2 of this camera is a 120 degree lens which I found to be too narrow. Um, the picture is alright but just doesn't look good uh, with the flight footage so I swapped it out with a 170 degree lens that I found on I think it was Banggood. Uh, you can get them in a 2-pack and they're not very expensive. So yeah there's another option too I've got two versions here that, you know, at first glance, they look pretty much the same. They're both the Cyclops 3, uh, but one is version 2, you can see the package there. This is the one that you can get on Amazon or Banggood. It's 20 bucks on Amazon and $16.99, I believe, on Banggood. This guy here, uh, I think, is an exclusive for GetFPV, and this is the Cyclops 3 version 3. And the difference here is they already include a better lens. I think this one's also 170 degree field of view. Um, but if you notice, the lens on this guy sticks out quite a bit further than what I've got going here. Kind of hard to tell with the mount there, but take my word for it, this lens does stick out further. So I'm planning to update this, the design for this mount uh, to add protection for the longer lens so I can start running this camera. And this is on Thingiverse. I'll put the update out there if you want to do this. Yeah, so basically there's two versions. Um, I recommend if you don't want to do the lens swap, it, just get the one from GetFPV. So the first thing that you're going to want to do when you get your camera is figure out a way to protect it. Um, in my case, I printed this in TPU. This is a flexible material. Uh, it acts like a bumper around the camera um, and it's really strong material so if you're doing this on a quad I highly recommend printing something in TPU uh, the you can do this on uh, like a plane or something like that and maybe use foam but you definitely got to have protection for this camera because it does not take a hit very well uh, the other thing that if you're gonna run this on a mini quad here is you you're gonna get a lot of vibrations uh, if you're like me and you crash into everything your props get kind of messed up and you bend them back. The camera is very sensitive to vibrations unless you have the right amount of flex in your mount. So in my case, it's secured at the bottom here by the two screws that go into the standoffs. Um, and then I also have this zip tie up here which kind of tensions everything back. And I played around with different designs and I found this to be to use the least amount of material uh, and to dampen the vibrations just the right amount. Uh, so I get very little jello. Uh, my previous versions of the, the mount, I, I was getting a lot of jello and it, it didn't, didn't work very well. Uh, so the other thing that you're gonna wanna do is the, the SD card pops in the back there. You can kinda see it. Uh, I had a big problem with my SD cards ejecting in crashes or just getting knocked loose in a crash. So I printed the, the top of this mount to have a strap that kind of goes all the way around and then secures in the other side there with a small M2 screw. I found that to be a good approach to not losing the SD card, uh, but I still had problems in a, in a crash. It would eject the card and it would lose the footage. So it doesn't record anything until the very end when you power it down. So I've lost a lot of really good footage from the cards just popping out a bit. So the next thing that I did was I designed this little spacer thing that goes right here. 
it's like a bumper spacer that basically is if you hit anything on the side here it does not transfer that force into the SD card and eject it so this uh, offers a little bit more protection and uh, this again is available on Thingiverse. I highly recommend uh, if you're going to run this camera, you're going to want to put this on the camera. Uh, basically, it's just a little 3D printed piece. I printed it in PLA. It kind of snaps into the camera there, and then you just I used some CA glue to to hold it in place. Uh, but before I had this in here, um, pretty much every time I would go out, I would have a crash at some point that would cause me to lose my footage. So you got to do that. Uh, the other thing that you want to think about when you're using this camera is uh, airflow. Uh, it gets it gets pretty hot when it's recording, so I wanted to uh, get as much air to that camera as I could, but still offer protection for crashes. Uh, there's there's other mounting solutions that are more like a box around the camera, um, and that's fine. But I prefer this approach just because it lets so much air through there and then still offers. The majority of the protection up front where it's going to be taking a hit. So the, the last thing you're going to want to think about is just try to keep everything light. Um, again, airflow and light, this design works pretty well for that. Um, all up weight, I've got one here that's not mounted. I'll throw that on the scale for you. So this has, this has the camera and all of the protection coming in at just under 10 grams. Uh, the other last bit that you're going to want to think about is how to power the camera. Um, my case, uh, the camera runs on 5 volts. I just pulled off of the uh, 5 volt uh, pad on my flight controller and I changed out the wiring so that I could pull them on and off. I basically put a, you can kind of see it better on this guy I think, it's a 3 wire like a servo connector. I wired that in so that the positive and negative are coming off of the 5 volts on the flight control. There's only two wires on this end of it. And then even though I don't use it for video, I leave I leave the three wires uh, connected to the Cyclops because when you swap the lens out, it's nice to be able to pull the video feed off in real time and use that to focus. Um, so the other end of this, these are just some uh, little header pins that I bent and soldered uh, and that fits perfectly into my connector that's on there. The other option is you can just wire that straight in, uh, but I wanted the option to be able to kind of remove it without, without having to desolder anything so I can do it in the field. Yeah, any um, questions or comments, go ahead and leave those below, and thanks for watching.